So, um, Tammy and I are under lockdown. We're 65, Tammy's not, she's getting close. Anyway, so our philosophy is we're keeping away from people because we don't want to get this nasty virus going around. It's giving me way too much time on my hands trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to be doing to keep my mind occupied. Well, I'm interested in pandemics and how they spread. So I thought I'd talk about the R value of a pandemic. This is an interesting thing, sometimes called R0. This is the, this is the to do with the um, rate of infection of an, an, an of a, pandemic. So if you look at the COVID virus, it has an R value somewhere between two and three. What this means is that every person who gets it typically will infect on average about two or three other people. So for the purpose of this little demonstration, we're going to set R to three and we're going to see what happens. It's so easy to understand this. You don't have to be a scientist or a mathematician to understand how this works and why the R value is so critical. And this is one of the things you're going to see people talking about is reducing the R value of three to some much lower number. So let's just start off with the beginnings of a pandemic. So, you know, somewhere in China, someone's got coronavirus. And that person then infects, because R is three, they infect three other people. So here they go. Here's the three other people that they infect. So here they are. So this is about, with the, with the coronavirus, that takes about four days. In about four days, that has happened. And then in about four more days, guess what? Those three people now each infect three other people. So here we go. <clears throat> so... Another four days. So now we're in this to eight days. I probably need to put this somewhere because I'm just going to write eight days there because I'll get off the board otherwise. So in eight days, you now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three times three, you've got nine people infected. So there's nine people infected. Let's go into this for another four days. So we're on our 11th day. So here's our 11th day. We've got three people and we've got three people and we've got three people, I'm going to run out of board space here, and my pen's kind of not liking it, and here we go, three people, and this person affects three people, and this person affects three people, and affects three people, and this last person, three people. Look at this. So now we're at day 11, and now we have 27 people have been infected, 27 people, and that's in... 11 days. So you can see this thing just rapidly grows and it gets out of control. And that's what we're seeing in places like Italy and New York. So what do you do about this? Well, in the, in the wake of not having an effective viral, antiviral drug or having, a, a, um, an effect, ha having any vaccine, what do you do? Well, what we have elected to do and most of the world have elected to do is you say, stay at home, don't go out, and that way you won't infect people. So what happens? Well, if everybody would really do that, if everybody really would stay at home, the whole thing goes to zero. Every, the R is now zero, the infection rate is zero, and literally in one incubation period, as much time as it takes for these people to get over their symptoms, which might be as much as 21 days, there's not a case. The whole thing's gone. So, you know, this whole economic ruination that we have going on would work if everybody would physically do what they're supposed to do. You, what you're supposed to do is what's best for you, that is to stay at home. Can we achieve an R of zero? No, it's probably not possible. Part of the problem is, is that you've got infected people, they're in hospitals, you've got people who've got to take care of those people, you've got people who are, are grocery store folks who are going to give us food, you've still got life going on at some lower level. Let's make R one third. And let's see what happens. So if we can achieve an R of, of one third, which by the way is quite possible, an R of one third, what happens? Now three people only infect one pe person. So it takes three, these three people infect one person and these three people infect one person. And so it goes down the line. We're just going to get our R of three out of the way. And these people infect one, and these people infect one. There we go. After one generation, which we're saying is about four days, and you probably can't see that off the bottom of the board. Four days. In four days, it went from 27 people to nine people. Let's do it one more time. These three people infect one person. These three people infect one person. These three people infect one person. 
Bingo, look at this. After the next four days, we're eight days into it, our 27 people went down to three people, and we'll just do it one more time. And here's the last go at this, and there it is right there. We're back to where we started after just three, one, two, three generations with an R of a third, something in the order of maybe 11 days. You've got to get these people over it completely. You know, maybe a month and a half. The whole thing's gone away. The whole thing's fixed. So I know that this idea about, um, you know, reducing the, your contact with other people, uh, you know, social distancing, even better, socially locking yourself up in your house. I know it seems, you know, it's very ruination to, to the whole economy. I understand that. But it freaking works. It absolutely works. And so that's what we're trying to achieve. And I think it helps to see that what you should be doing for you personally, what I should be doing as a 65 year old is staying in my house. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm doing something that's important for, for, for not risking my life. And I'm doing something for you. I'm making, trying to get R down to something around a third. And if we can do that, this whole thing goes away really quickly. Just to bring up one more concept here that you're gonna hear about, you know, it's about um, herd, um, I can't think of the right word now, herd immunity. Herd immunity, the idea behind herd immunity is, is that people get it, once they've had it once, they're unlikely to get it again, certainly for a few years, so they are now immune. They're part of the herd that's immune. And if you start injecting that into this, then these people here, if some of these people have herd immunity, let's say a third of the people have herd immunity, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this thing just collapses really quickly because now, <clears throat> now, right away, you only have three people who are infected and the whole thing dies down, to, dies down really quickly. So that's what herd immunity is. How do you get herd immunity? You get the disease and you get over it. It's called the novel virus for a reason. It's new. Nobody out there has immunity unless you've already had it. And there's very few people in the world so far who really have it and have survived it. The other thing you do is you come up with the vaccine. So the, the, the big thing that we've got to do is keep this thing quelled down, get an R, something less than one, so it dies back down, so our medical facilities can cope with the people who are sick while we have time to come up with a vaccination where everybody has herd immunity. Hey, it's really pretty simple, really. But the, really the key to this is you. The key to this is me. The key to this is that we do social distancing. Better yet, we try to stay home as much as we reasonably possibly can. If we have to go outside, we wash our hands and we don't reinfect our, our other house members. If you do that, this whole thing's over with. It's just a bad nightmare. So here we go. Hey, thanks for watching. Be safe, wash your hands, and stay in your houses. Bye, everybody.